Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 21. And in this segment, we're going to take a look at uh, one particular parameterization, which is pretty widely used, especially in severe weather forecasting. Uh, we're going to take a look at one particular parameterization of the buoyant force that we, or the buoyancy equation that we derived in segment one. And I imagine all of you, or hopefully all of you, have, if you've read any sort of uh, severe weather discussion or learned anything about severe weather in the past, then I'm sure you've seen this term at some point before, and that is the concept of CAPE, which is a variable that has, which is also an acronym, which stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. And as you're going to see, the way that this parameter is calculated is it uses the buoyancy equation that we derived in segment one at the beginning of lecture, at the beginning of this lecture. And it turns out that the equation for CAPE is defined as the integral uh, from the uh, level of free convection, so the higher the level of free convection in the atmosphere, basically that's the point in the atmosphere where an air parcel will become positively buoyant, meaning it will be allowed to rise freely without any sort of um, impedance in front of it. So basically the, at the level of free convection, that's basically where the air parcel is able to rise freely without any sort of uh, obstacles to impede its upward motion. And then the integral grows from the level of free convection up to the equilibrium level. And the equilibrium level is where the parcel becomes negatively buoyant again. That's where the parcel becomes cooler within its environment. And usually this occurs at around the height of the tropopause. So as the air parcels go up through the troposphere, they're going to go into the stratosphere, or go toward the stratosphere. Stratosphere is very warm, uh, also very dry. So as you get as your air parcels go into the stratosphere, you're going to get uh, negatively buoyant air because your air parcel is now cooler than the surrounding air in the stratosphere, and that's typically where the equilibrium level is at. Is usually right around the tropopause, which is the interface between the stratosphere and the troposphere. But CAPE is calculated by taking the buoyancy equation that we had from segment one and integrating that from the level, the height of the level of free convection to the height of the equilibrium level. So just written out explicitly, that's what that integral would look like. And of course, these temperature terms here are functions of height. So you have a function for the air parcel temperature with height, and you have a function for the ambient environment with height here. And then this form of the equation is actually not that uh, nice to work with. A uh, more desirable form of the equation involves using pressure as the vertical coordinate instead of height. And using a uh, form of the hip symmetric equation, we can do some algebra to rewrite this equation for CAPE and get an equation that looks like something that's as follows, where the CAPE of the air parcel is now the pressure level of the level of free convection. So instead of the height above ground level, we're looking at the pressure level of the uh, level of free convection. And again, integrated from that point in the atmosphere up to the pressure level of the equilibrium, the pressure where the equilibrium level is residing which on any given atmosphere is usually around 200 millibars. Sometimes it can be uh, it can be as low to the ground as 300 millibars, or it can be as high above the ground as 100 millibars. Just depends on, uh, kind of depends on what latitude you're at. If you're at a lower latitude, your equilibrium level is going to be higher usually. And if you're at a higher latitude that is closer to the polar regions, usually your equilibrium level will be lower down in the atmosphere. And you pick up some extra terms here, but the main thing that we want to focus on is we no longer have this denominator here. So that makes evaluating this integral a little bit easier. So the CAPE is defined as the dry air gas constant, which is 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, all multiplied by the temperature of the air parcel minus the temperature of the environment. Again, now, now this is a function of pressure instead of a function of Z, which is height. Now this is a function of pressure, and then the integral of dP over P, which we can then rewrite as, rewrite as d natural log of p, the natural log of pressure. So if that, uh, if that, se if that step doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you don't really need to worry about it. The main thing that you want to focus on is the, the, uh, the calculation itself, just where, the, just where the equation for Cape comes from itself. So this basically takes a look at, uh, if, you, if you lift a theoretical air parcel up into the atmosphere, this basically tells you, gives you a big picture view of how much buoyancy is present throughout the entire troposphere, which is why this parameter is a widely used parameter when assessing the potential for severe thunderstorms. Because if you've got a troposphere that is largely buoyant throughout the entire troposphere, then uh, you're going to have potential for some stronger updrafts. Whereas if you've got pockets of the atmosphere that aren't as buoyant, then that'll show up as a lower cape value, which might be a signal that you don't have as intense thunderstorms or your potential for thunderstorms is uh, less. 
So CAPE is often used to assess exactly how unstable the atmosphere is. And by unstable, we mean if, if we lift an air parcel up, does the air parcel keep accelerating upward or does it come back down? If an atmosphere is unstable, then the process of lifting the air parcel will call it, cause it to accelerate upward versus a stable atmosphere where we lift the air parcel and it comes back down to where it started. So again, unstable atmosphere, air parcel rises and it runs away, it keeps running upward or rising upward. And a stable atmosphere, if we lift an air parcel, it'll come right back to where it started. And another thing that's kind of important to keep in mind about CAPE is that only positive values of CAPE are reported. So if you've got a region of the atmosphere that causes you to have negative buoyancy, that'll just be reported as a value of zero CAPE, meaning you've got zero buoyancy, or zero positive buoyancy, I should say. So that might then that might then beg the question, what values of CAPE are values that we should concern ourselves with? So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and make this disclaimer right now. The values that I'm about to put up on the screen here are not set in stone golden standard values. These thresholds that I'm going to put up on the screen here are subject to vary depending on certain situations. So this is just a general rule of thumb. If you see a number that's close to what you see on the left hand side of this table here on the left hand column, then you might start worrying about what's on the right hand column. But that doesn't guarantee you're going to get what's on the right hand column. But to start off with, this sort of is a reiteration of what we talked about just a few seconds ago. If you've got a Cape value of zero, that means you've got a fully stable atmosphere. The air parcels are not going to be rising on their own uh, by their own free will. Right around 250 joules per kilogram, that's when we say that there's potentially enough energy in the atmosphere to support thunderstorms. Just regular old run-of-the-mill thunderstorms. Uh, maybe some very small hail, maybe some uh, mildly gusty winds, but uh, that's about where it stops. Just regular thunderstorms with uh, uh, Cape values around 250 joules per kilogram. Right around 500 joules per kilogram is where we might see a signal for strong thunderstorms. That is, thunderstorms that might be producing some uh, more sizable hail, maybe half-inch uh, penny-sized hail, and maybe some stronger winds, 40, 50 miles per hour. But uh, usually you don't get severe thunderstorms with values above 500 joules per kilogram. If you do get a severe thunderstorm with a Cape value about this number, it's probably not going to be severe for too long. Uh, there are, of course, as uh, thunderstorms go through their life cycle, there are times where they ramp up intensely, then come back down. And it's possible that a strong thunderstorm could be sufficiently intense at a narrow window of, through a narrow window of time where it might produce, say, hail over one inch in diameter or winds of 60 miles per hour, but usually not the case with Cape values as low as 500 joules per kilogram. Right around 750 joules per kilogram of Cape, that's when you might start worrying more about severe thunderstorms. So again, you could get a thunderstorm that's a little bit more intense around 750 joules per kilogram, but usually uh, it's not the case in the atmosphere. And if it is the case, it probably won't be lasting very long. Excuse me. And another thing I should probably point out is uh, the, uh, the standards of CAPE are not universal across the entire U.S. In fact, parts of the southeast, you can actually get severe weather events with CAPE values as low as 200, even 500. But uh, these, uh, these values are more representative of a severe weather setup in the plains and not something, say, in the southeast or on the west coast or something, uh, something that's outside the plains region. Then right around 2,000 joules per kilogram, that's when we, that's when we might say there's enough at energy in the atmosphere to support significant updrafts and the potential for more organized thunderstorms. So right around 2000 is when we say, okay, there might be enough energy to support, say, um, a supercell thunderstorm that might produce very large hail, uh, very strong winds. Um, also, a value over 2000 might indicate more of a tornado threat than, say, a lower value of Cape. But again, uh, these are just rules of thumb. Having Cape value of 2,000 joules per kilogram is not going to guarantee that you've got a significant severe weather threat to worry about. Right around 3,000 joules per kilogram is when the Weather Service starts to consider that a volatile atmosphere, meaning something that goes up in that environment could be something that is a potentially a significant threat to life and property. And if you... These are... Uh, Values over 3,000 are not especially common, but values over 5,000 are considerably rare. It's not very often that values of 5,000 are observed in the atmosphere, but when they are, uh, you've got an extremely volatile atmosphere in place. And the way I like to put it is if you've got a 
environment characterized by 5,000 joules per kilogram of cape, whatever goes up will go up. It will go up very rapidly and very explosively. So again, those are just some general rules of thumb of what you might expect if you start to see cape values in this neighborhood. Uh, not These are not set in stone golden uh, magic numbers that guarantee something will happen. These are just uh, general rules of thumb that uh, you just have to keep in mind whenever you're, say, making a forecast for thunderstorms or severe weather. And another property about CAPE is that you can also estimate the maximum updraft speed using the value of CAPE that you've calculated. And typically that calculation goes as just the square root of two times the CAPE value. Uh, and the units that you get back from that are meters per second. So uh, let's say you have, uh, well, just uh, just higher values of CAPE typically give you a uh, stronger updraft, but it's also important to keep in mind some of the assumptions that we made. And we'll come back and highlight those in just a few minutes. But remember that we made some assumptions with uh, deriving the buoyancy equation, and the buoyancy equation is what we use to calculate CAPE. So uh, it turns out in practice that this equation, which is using the conservation of energy, uh, doesn't work very well. So that is uh, using the idea of kinetic energy is equal to potential energy, conservation of energy. That doesn't work, too, work very well in practice, and a more empirical and accurate representation is um, you would plug in the same value that you had here, two times cape, take the square root of that, and then divide that number by two. And that's usually a better up, uh, estimate of the updraft speed. And uh, this is something that we're going to highlight and put a great emphasis on is that is not all cape is the same. So if you've got, well, actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is a graphic from Comet, which is a prominent online uh, learning platform for meteorology. So if you take a look at the, uh, if you take a look at these two soundings, which is where you see a cape represented and the orange shaded area is the area that represents how much cape there is in the atmosphere. So in both of these soundings the amount of cape is the same. I think it's roughly 2500 joules per kilogram. So you got 2500 joules per kilogram in both of these soundings. We'll just assume that's that is the case. However in the case of sounding A you see that cape is distributed over a much smaller depth in the atmosphere. Whereas over uh, sounding B that cape is distributed over a much larger depth. And this is where the terms skinny and fat cape come into play. So sounding B in this case would have what we call skinny cape because you have uh, this energy but it's all strung out over a very large depth of the atmosphere versus in sounding A where we have what we refer to as a fat cape profile where you have the same amount of cape but it's distributed over less of a uh, less depth in the atmosphere. So if these two values have the same cape we say that sounding A is going to have the more intense updraft than sounding B is. And again, this stems back to the assumptions that we made and the assumptions that we highlight in segments one and two. So in segment one, we only considered buoyant force and force of gravity. And in segment two, we highlighted some of the other forces that are present on an air parcel that we're not accounting for in the buoyancy equation. So if we're not accounting for those four forces in the buoyancy equation, then we're not accounting those, uh, we're not accounting those four forces in the equation for CAPE either. So in, just from an empirical standpoint, which is what we see in practice, if you got fat cape, which is a lot of cape over a short amount of, uh, or sh over a short depth in the atmosphere, you're going to have a much more robust updraft or much more potential for strong updrafts than if you have the same amount of cape strung out over a much larger depth in the atmosphere. But that's going to do it on the segment for cape. And in the next segment, we're going to talk about another parameterization for uh, buoyancy in the atmosphere. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.